This week on Christian World News, are we seeing the end of the Christian church in Iraq? One respected church leader says that soon there will be no Christians in that country. Others say God is just getting started. Plus, in Peru, devastating floods sweep away everything in their path, leaving behind mud, ruin, and infected drinking water. See how one team of relief workers is bringing fresh water and fresh hope to the victims. And... I think in many ways it's been a train wreck for 50 years in terms of the people going through these places, getting secularized and going out. See how this man is changing the secular status quo at Ivy League schools. 여러분 안녕하십니까? 크리스천 월드 뉴스입니다. 얼마 전 런던에서는 테러 사건이 발생했죠. 국회의사당 바로 앞에서 일어난 테러였는데요. 이 사건에 연루된 용의자가 체포됐습니다. 이들은 최소 8명인 것으로 전해졌는데요. 이러한 혼란 속에서 교회가 역할을 해줘야 한다고 주장하는 이들이 있습니다. 오늘의 첫 소식으로 함께 만나보시죠. After ISIS claimed responsibility for the Westminster Bridge terror attack, British Prime Minister Theresa May declared her country is fearless. We are not afraid, and our resolve will never waver in the face of terrorism. ISIS called the suspect, who has now been identified as 52-year-old Khalid Massoud, a soldier of the Islamic State. Surveillance video caught Massoud driving a car across the crowded bridge, plowing through pedestrians before smashing into a railing outside Parliament. He then ran from his car and was shot and killed by police. Authorities say Massoud was born in the UK and had a long criminal history. However, police say no crimes were terrorism related. British authorities had investigated him for extremism in the past, but he was not currently on a terrorism watch list. Police arrested five men and three women on suspicion of preparation of terrorist acts in connection to the attack. Meanwhile, Christian political leaders are calling on the church to be a voice of peace and healing. Prayer for wisdom for our leaders as they work out what new arrangements we need to put in place. But I think we need to also pray that we have a spirit of compassion, that we use the right language uh, in terms of how we discuss some of the issues that are obviously raised in people's consciousness and concerns that are raised in the media. And people in London honored those who lost their lives, including Keith Palmer, the 48-year-old police officer stabbed by the attacker. Doing the job he loved. Uh, and protecting our city, protecting Parliament. They also paid tribute to Kurt Cochran of Utah, who was celebrating his silver wedding anniversary with his wife Melissa in Europe. The only word I could really describe it as is surreal. One thing I could say about Kurt and his legacy, though, is he, he did live his dream. The threat level in the United Kingdom remains at severe. That means a terrorist attack is highly likely to happen. Mark Martin, CBN News. 이번에는 중동으로 가봅니다. 이라크에서 사역을 하고 있는 캐논 앤드류 화이트 성공의 사제가 이라크 기독교에 대한 우려를 나타냈습니다. 이라크 내에서 기독교가 말살될 위기에 처했다는 겁니다. Canon Andrew White is known as the vicar of Baghdad. He led St. George's Anglican Church during some of the most violent periods of the insurgency after the U.S. invasion in 2003. Today, he says the country is so dangerous for Christians that many are leaving and they don't plan to return. He also says this time will soon come when no Christians will remain in Iraq. 하지만 반면 CBN 국제수석특파원 게리 레이는 반대 의견을 펼쳤는데요. 좀더 자세한 이야기 들어보겠습니다. You disagree with Canon White, right? Why? Well, I do, in all respect to Andrew White. I found that there is an underground church there, evangelists that came above ground, they're still there. And they're still working the streets, leading people to Christ. In addition to that, tens of thousands of Yazidis and Muslims that are homeless, that have been displaced internally, they're in northern Iraq now. Guess who's reaching out to them, ministering to them, and leading many to Christ? Mm -hmm. I've been to the churches, you have too. We've, we've seen 
Many of the people filling the churches now are former Muslims or former Yazidis. They're coming to Christ. So I disagree. Maybe the traditional church is in decline, the yeah. Anglican church and so forth. But I think there's a new thing that God is doing there in Iraq. Talk about a little bit about the conditions. I mean, he does point a very hostile condition that makes it difficult for Christians to survive it. But there have been, there's a remnant there. Mm -hmm. There are some that have stayed because they want to be salt and light in Iraq. If everyone leaves, who's going to stay? and be salt. So and do you believe a church, uh, there will be a church that makes a comeback at some I, point? I think it's going to be a vibrant and strong church. I think God is doing some pruning, mm -hmm. getting rid of the dead wood. But Christ said He will do a new thing, and I think that is what He is doing today in Iraq. Uh, you have a different perspective about the persecuted church and what happens yes. when the church is persecuted. Well, I think you have to have an eternal perspective and one that is not fleshly. In the flesh we say, oh, make the persecution stop. Mm -hmm. We have to stop the suffering and the hurt. Yes, no one welcomes persecution. But Christ said, as his followers, we will be persecuted. Mm -hmm. We can expect it because the world hated him first. It's going to hate his followers. But the good thing about it is he uses that and grows his church. And that's what we're seeing in Iraq. So uh, talk true. about how what the church here in the West can do specifically to continue to stand with our brothers and sisters in Iraq, Syria, and across the large swath of the Middle East. Well, I know you, those that you have met and those that I have met always say the same thing. When you say, what can we do for you? They always say the first thing they want is prayer. Mm -hmm. And then once they get beyond that, they say, well, we can use some Bibles too. But prayer and Bibles, yeah, so get on your knees and pray for these people. But in addition to, to that, uh, put your faith in action. Do something to help them. There are many Iraqis that are homeless right now. There are many groups that are helping, like CBN Disaster Relief. We're stepping in and helping them. Many other groups are helping, Samaritan's Purse, Operation Blessing. Support them and helping them because they're homeless. They, they need not, not only a good place to stay, but they need food, clothing, water, education for yeah. their children, those, those types of things. So why shouldn't your church step out and sponsor some Iraqi families and help them? So let's help them there first. But then those who come here, reach out and don't be afraid of them. Yeah. Reach out and show them the love of Christ. Okay, someone who has seen it firsthand across the Middle East, Gary Lane, our chief international correspondent. Mm -hmm. As always, sir, thank you for your thank analysis. You, 예루살렘 구시가지 중에서도 가장 거룩한 성지로 꼽히는 곳 어딘지 아시나요? 바로 성묘 교회인데요. 예수님이 십자가에서 돌아가신 후 사흘간 묻히셨다가 부활하셨다고 믿는 바로 그 장소지요. 최근 이 진귀한 내부 복원 작업 영상이 공개됐는데요. 함께 만나보시죠. It's called the Edicule, a structure built over what many believe is the burial place of Jesus. After years of neglect, it's getting a facelift. The Holy Rock is preserved, mm. and this is mm -hmm. a great uh, result right. of this phase of the project. <laughs> Professor Antonia Morapulu oversees the project. Of course, now we are going with uh, bolts and anchors, titanium anchors, to uh, readjust the marble slabs <coughs> upon some uh, mortar and concrete. <coughs> that means uh, we are going to assure the structural integrity through this uh, intervention. National Geographic first documented the restoration last year for a television special. This is the marble slab that was removed for the first time in more than 200 years. Beneath that they found a slab from the time of the Crusaders and underneath that a tomb from the first century that many believe was the tomb of Jesus. While many consider the Church of the Holy Sepulchre the site where Jesus was buried and rose again, Others believe the resurrection took place at the garden tomb not far away. Whichever site is authentic, the work is preserving the church for years to come. We had, of course, to open the holy tomb in order to insulate it from the grouts and to protect it. This number, S3E14, that means S3E14. This is from this place of the monument. The restoration is like putting a puzzle together. Conservator Theodorus Marvides explain how they reconstruct the marble slabs surrounding the edicule. We open holes, we put titanium rods between the two pieces. We are putting the adhesive on the surface inside. We're just joining the pieces together, like this. Okay, and then we have to put the, the piece vertically so that uh, the weight of the above to give the pressure 
and this ability to put the pieces together in a perfect uh, position. For those working on the project, it's not a job, but a joy. What were your feelings when the, when the tomb was open? Great feelings. Uh, we were feeling that uh, uh, working on the tomb of Christ, uh, we were not in just a monument. It's the message of resurrection, is the hope and the praise of millions of people. You feel when you are there, you are in the most alive place in the world. For my mother or my grandmother, they feel very proud of me. I feel very happy every day to be here. Mm. And when the project is finished, then I will be more happy than ever in my life. The project is expected to be completed by Easter. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem's Old City. 미국에는 하버드, 프린스턴, 예일 대학 등 명문 대학들이 참 많은데요. 이들 대학의 공통점은 기독교가 설립 과정에 공헌을 했다는 겁니다. 하지만 최근 들어 바로 그 기독교의 유산이 사라지고 있는데요. 그 뿌리를 찾기 위해 나선 한 단체가 있습니다. 지금 바로 소개해 드립니다. To Christian Ministries, many college campuses might as well be putting out not welcome signs. Activists and campus administrators increasingly target Christian groups. One weapon, accusing them of failing to meet non-discrimination policies. I think a lot of times these campuses, I, I think about uh, the way um, the Soviet Union was years ago. They had a few show churches to make it look like a freedom religion. But behind the scenes, they do a lot to suppress it and keep it out as much as they can. Matt Bennett saw a need for more Christian influence at elite universities. I think in many ways it's been a train wreck for 50 years in terms of the people going through these places, getting secularized and going out. I mean, the research we've done, if you look at the most influential schools, maybe the top 20, and look at the top leaders in government, business, education, and media, about two-thirds of them went to those top 20 schools. In 2011, he started Christian Union to specifically focus on schools that consistently produce the nation's leaders. That's led to 10 campus chapters, including all the Ivy League. If we want to change the nation, we've got to hit these people and minister to them. These campuses have done us a great service. They brought together some of the most leadership-minded, uh, ambitious uh, young people in the country. And then our part is simply to tell them about Jesus Christ and, and disciple them in the Lord. Christian Union has faced some pushback from university officials, just as other Christian groups have on secular campuses. But Bennett has a more aggressive approach to dealing with discrimination, making it clear to the university that he won't back down or go away. When you do that, the universities end up respecting you more because of it. They know they can't just kind of roll right over you in whatever the circumstances. A pretty radical approach that's seen success on campus, but actually met resistance from Christians for its aggressive stand. Bennett's response is to point to the Apostle Paul. We need to be firm about it. Um, you see, wherever the Apostle Paul went in his travels, there was either riots or revival. When you preach the gospel and you put it forth, there's often reaction. So we should expect that, that that's normal and should happen. And not be afraid of it. There's going to be some turmoil from time to time. When Princeton University refused to recognize Christian Union, Bennett took a move from the playbook of powerful secular groups, hiring a civil rights organization. So they wrote a letter to the president of um, Princeton, and she wrote back in three days and said, you're absolutely right, um, you should be so. They did the right thing, and we're thankful for that. Um, they did in three days what they wouldn't do for us in three years. And his efforts have led to positive response from students looking for more than just academic achievement. I think these students are, are hungry for, uh, in their soul, the things of God, really just like everybody else. And it can be hard to be in touch with, with that when uh, you're running so hard after what's glamorized as success in the world's eyes. And, um, but all of, our, all of our hearts really are created, as Augustine said, um, for God, and they're going to be restless until they find rest in Him. Clay Cromer heads up Yale's chapter of the Christian Union. He says, believe it or not, students are finding the Lord in the Ivy League. Oftentimes they come here and realize, wow, I'm not the greatest in my town or city anymore at XYZ. I'm around a bunch of people just like me, you know, <laughs> and uh, so as people wrestle with those things, they can get in touch with uh, the needs they have, which are really for the Lord. Even having achieved, uh, you know, come to my dream school, that that did not satisfy and that, that was not it. I still, I was still a, 
a longing within and um, and a consciousness of need in me and knew that somehow that had to do with God but didn't really know like how I what I didn't know like what what that looks like in the midst of his search Kenneth received an invitation to a Christian Union Bible study it was there that I think I was seeing um, in someone um, light um, I just watching the way he was talking and the way he was reading the Bible and as if he actually loved it and, and believed it and there was reality there um, I knew he knew something I did not he had something I, I did not have not long after that on the floor of his dorm room he begged the Lord to make him new God met me there I knew the it seems like the the guilt and, and the weight of that lifted off and and that was a joy and a peace that I'd never known before and um, I knew I was uh, I, I was in the presence of uh, more than who I am. In the competitive, rigorous, and stressful Ivy League environment, young men and women are experiencing the freedom only Christ can deliver. Now, with the support and encouragement from groups like Christian Union, they can grow their faith and spread God's influence around the world. Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night, thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke, the dungeon flamed with light. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, New York. 한 대학생이 전 세계 사람들의 기도를 모아 책으로 출간했습니다. 도널드 트럼프 미국 대통령을 위한 기도들인데요. 이 책을 함께 만나보시죠. 1981. Veronica Karaman is a golf pro and peak performance coach, but also dedicated prayer warrior. She felt God himself calling her to pray for presidential candidate Donald Trump. Trump went down the escalator and announced his presidency, and God said to me, pray for Trump. I'm not a political person, but I said, yes, sir. The Regent University grad wrote out those prayers, ending up with about 120 pages, which she delivered to Trump. Then she heard God saying to step it up a notch. I heard this download, Prayers for the President, and I thought, wouldn't it be a wonderful expression and gift to have a compilation of prayers from people all over that had the heart of the Father that was praying for him. She connected with a global audience through a webinar. And prayers just started coming in from all over the world. The result is Prayers for the President, the first 100 days and beyond, which people can track down at prayersforthepresident.org. Karaman says readers report weeping as the words touch their heart. When God calls you to pray, he puts his heart in your heart. And you can't read this book and not cry. And to see the love of God for this person, for people all over the world. Veronica's betting most people don't realize just how world-altering their united prayers can be. People don't understand the power of prayer. You know, as we pray and come together as a, as a people, then God will hear our prayers, you know, so we have more power than we think. She shared a couple of her favorite written prayers from the book. As he has allowed you to become a king, I bless you to allow him to rule and reign in your heart so that the king of heaven will be able to rule through you on earth. We cut off from President Trump all the liabilities of those who went before him and the snares of the office and its deep roots fed from places other than the river of God. I pray that you will form in him the character of a president made in the image of your son, Jesus Christ. Veronica's hope and prayer is this book could get into enough hands that 10,000 people could be praying the same prayer on the same day for President Trump. Paul Strand, CBN News, Washington. 기독교인들이 대규모 홍수의 여파로 신음하고 있는 페루를 돕기 위해 나섰습니다. 기록적인 폭우로 많은 사상자와 피해자가 발생했는데요. 이 가운데서도 교회들은 이들에게 희망의 빛을 나누고 있습니다. Young Christians from Emmanuel Bible Church visited one of the affected areas near Lima. The people of Terrazas del Valle and Chosica received much needed relief. Their city was flooded after a nearby river spilled over its banks and into city streets. 
leaving many families without housing, food and water. The calamities have fallen on this country and have affected many people. We identify families in towns like this, where the floods have impacted and the people have lost everything. Since January, warmer than usual ocean water temperatures and high winds, a coastal El Nino have brought torrential rains, flooding and mudslides mostly to Peru's northern coast. The government says so far at least 75 have died. More than 99,000 people have been affected. These villagers express gratitude for the timely help they received from the young Christians. I'm so thankful for this help. We are more needed than ever. We are hungry, thirsty, and the people don't have water, no foods. We are impotent. I feel bad because children are those who suffer the most. Rosana Zapata, our Mundo Cristiano Christian World News Spanish correspondent in Peru, witnessed the relief given to villagers near Lima. Help not only has been materials, but also spiritual. Zapata reports Peruvian Christians have launched a worldwide prayer appeal on social media called hashtag pray for Peru. This volunteer prayed on location. We are praying with them. A lot of them have accepted Jesus, and that is a great satisfaction for us. We know that we can help them, and we are the hands and the feet of Jesus. Blessed are the feet of those who bring good news to those in need. We have many families affected, and we are very grateful for your presence. Thanks God for give us the supplies. You give us spiritual support, and this is very important to move forward. CBN is also bringing timely help, partnering with Peruvian Christians and others in the affected areas. In partnership with Peru's Joint Command and the founder of Business Solutions Against Poverty, our in-country disaster relief teams have delivered medicines, water, and insect repellent. We've joined with churches in Peru's capital city of Lima to provide food, clothing, blankets, and drinking water for flood victims in the cities of Chibote and Trujillo. Meteorologists are predicting heavy rains may continue through the end of April, so CBN is organizing more teams to bring help in the days ahead. Gary Lane, CBN News. 오늘 준비한 소식은 여기까지입니다. 저는 다음 주에 다시 찾아오겠습니다. 시청해주신 여러분 고맙습니다. Yeah.